Oh, Steve, say on that Mayo suicide, I got a new angle. I got a hunch it's murder. Ten minutes ago, you said it was suicide. Make up your mind, will you? Well, listen, after I phoned you, I talked to the colored janitor, and he said that Mayo guy was an electrician on one of the studio lots, and he was working on uh, some sort of an invention, uh, anti-aircraft searchlights or something. That's why I've got a hunch it's murder. What did the cops say it was? Suicide. Well, then that's what we're printing. Cops are still hanging around outside. Here's the mail. Now, you can listen to it later. Go out and see what's happening in the hall. Instructions to all agents. It is absolutely necessary for you to mention the title of this recording when making contacts with the headquarters. Until further notice, the telephone number is Exposition 6200. That is all. Must be on the wrong floor. I was looking for a guy by the name of Snyder, but I guess he's... Must live upstairs. Carl, that other fellow was out there again. What other fellow? Me was friend. Did he go in? No, he started to. But he saw the cop. He went upstairs. I'll be right back. Okay. Are these all the papers you could find in Mayor's room? Sure, Doctor. I gave it a good going over and grabbed everything. Looks like you killed a man for a lot of worthless papers. This is not my idea of efficiency. But, Doctor, we simply followed instructions. I had very definite information that this fellow Mayor was working on a new searchlight. And I expected you to bring me something connected with that. Not all this chunk. Yes? To a water lily. Yes, I'll see. Yes? Mr. Beck is on the phone. Oh, it's Carl Beck. If he's beat me to those plants, he will make me pay plenty for them. 
Put him out. I have a little drawing of a search slide John Mayo was working on. Thought you might be interested. Sorry. It's not a search slide I'm interested in. It's the filter that eliminates the light beam. If you can get that, we'll talk business. You're looking for a lead. There it is. It's his daughter. Are you sure? Sure. I've worked with her in pictures. Say, maybe she has them or knows where they are. All right, Nick. I'll give you another chance at the same job. That's one more than you would get in Germany. Well, that'll be a pleasure, I assure you. Yes? Mr. Robert Nelson and Mr. Elliot Jennings. By appointment, Doctor. I'll see them in a moment. Oh, uh, here, Doc. I wouldn't want this found on me. No, keep it. You may need it again very soon. Okay. Now, you'll excuse me. Sure. No, not that way. This way, please, if you don't mind. Set those men in. Uh, Nick, let me see that ring, please. Uh, you just put it on, squeeze a guy's arm, and in a couple of minutes, he's asleep. For good. Look like suicide, yes? Uh, yeah, don't even leave a mark. Very clever. I'm pleased to report, since we talked to you last, that we've made extraordinary progress here on the West Coast. I'm glad to hear it, Nelson. You have the incorporation papers? Jennings has them. Here you are. North American Peace Association, Incorporated. You have an imposing name, gentlemen. Not only imposing, but very effective. We've enrolled some very influential people. What do you think of our slogan, Doctor? There never was a good war nor a bad peace. Excellent. Excellent. One of my jobs is to influence the American people against war, or at least make them apathetic to it. You realize, Doctor, it'll take quite a little money to get this organization properly launched. Oh, I understand. We're counting on the $10,000 you pledged. I suppose you could use some of it right now. Well, well yes. yes. Well, here's a thousand. You may call on me for more, as you need it, provided you are getting results. I'm Thank sure you. the results will please you. They had better. Pardon me, sir, but you told me to remind you to turn on the radio at 2.30. Oh, yes. Let's hear what our friend Bob Davis has to say about us today. Put it on. As I predicted some months ago. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you the lowdown on a brand new organization. Pardon me, I mean racket. The North American Peace Association. If that isn't an alias for Goebbels, Goering, and Schickelgruber, then my name isn't Bob Davis. At least he has the name right. And get a load of their slogan. There never was a good war or a bad peace. That bunk has been kicked around for a hundred years, and it's just as false and destructive as the day it was first hatched. I don't know who's underwriting this mob of phony peacemongers, but you can bet all the dead Japs in China I'm going to find out. That gentleman is a little bit too curious to suit me. The two rabble-rousers who head this organization are no strangers to me. I've had their number for 10 years. These two con men for once in their lives have plenty of money and are threatening to drive me off the air. Well, here's a little tip, Mr. Nelson and Mr. Jennings, just in case you're listening. I'll be on the air when you're both in Alcatraz and you can relay that to Tokyo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Bye-bye. Bye, Bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard Bob Davis in another of his daily broadcasts. Not very flattering to you, gentlemen, is he? I'll put him off the air if I have to use a bullet. Oh, Mr. Oh, King, I enjoyed your last picture. Cup of coffee, please. Well, hello, Mitzi. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Gee, honey, I was awfully sorry to hear about your father. Thanks. Well, it uh, looks like we're both working, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, who are you working for? Oh, some foreign director named Bodanowski. 
You know, it kills me the way they always give American military pictures to foreign directors. <laughs> Do you have a good part? No, oh, it's probably only a day's work. Have a spoon? Well, you look mighty snappy in that uniform. Yeah, I wouldn't mind keeping this permanently. But I guess the Army's going to get me first. I thought you were in 3A on account of your mother. No, <laughs> we talked it over and she's decided she can get along without me, so I'm going to ask to be reclassified. I've got to see my draft board tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Good for you, Jimmy. If this war lasts much longer, we'll be making pictures with all women casts. Oh, well, that wouldn't be so bad if they all looked like you. <laughs> Miss May on the set, please. Be right there. Oh, Jimmy, I'm singing at the Harbor Club starting tonight. Why don't you run in and see me sometime before you go? Well, I'll do that. Promise? Cross my heart. What can I lose? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Just a moment. Nick reporting. Yes, Nick. Uh, listen, tell O'Cora to meet me with the car, will you? I'm going to follow her home after work. Yeah. Uh, why don't we just go through her apartment after she leaves? That are taken care of. Doctor has guy all set to that. Well, I don't see any sense in our following her. Does he think she carries important papers like that around with her? That's what we have to find out? Well, you will have to find that out by yourself. She might recognize me if she got a good look. Hello. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Swell, I'd love to. All right, well, make it snappy. I have to be at the club in about 15 minutes. Bye. Was that Eddie? <laughs> oh, he promised to take me out tonight. Relax, honey. Eddie phoned 20 minutes ago. He's on his way up from Wilmington. In the truck? Well, he didn't say. Then it's in the truck. Oh, oh boy, that feels good. Oh, Mitzi, hmm? I was just thinking, you know, uh, well, you know how it is. How what is? When a girl gets to be my age and she ain't married yet, she needs all the breaks she can get. So, you want my new green suit again, hmm? No, but, uh, how's chances of borrowing your car? Okay, Joan. Really? You mean you don't need it? No, Jimmy's driving me to the club tonight. But don't let anything happen to those tires. Oh, you don't care what happens to me and Eddie. Look, honey, you can always get a new boyfriend, but just try and get a new tire. Well, maybe you got something there. Oh, what I need is liniment. Oh. Here. Well, what did you do today? Oh, nothing. Just fell off a horse 11 times before the director was satisfied. Oh, well, I think I'll get out of me working clothes. You know something, Mitzi? Eddie's going to propose tonight. Well, what makes you think so? He bought a diamond ring on time. Well, how do you know? I got a call this morning from the Royal Jewelry Company. The big sap gave me as a reference. No. They asked me if I thought he'd be a good risk. What did you say? I told him I was willing to take a chance on him myself. Well, I never heard of anything so funny. You know something? I shouldn't marry a guy as dumb as that. But I'm afraid I'm gonna. Well, hello, Eddie. Hello. We were just talking about you. Oh, yeah? Maybe that's why my ear was burning. <laughs> oh, Joan, that man's here again. We don't let him get away. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Okay. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. Well, Eddie, how are things going with you? Ah, uh, swell. I'm getting a new truck next week. Really? What's the matter with the old one? Oh, it's all right. But between you and I, Mitzi, I think Joan's getting a little fed up with me taking her out in that old rattle trap. Ah, uh, she'll love this new job. <laughs> It's all dark and, uh... Well, go on. That's all. Mitzi, I took the keys out of your purse. Oh, all right. Mitzi's letting us use her car tonight. Oh, gee, that's swell. That's nice of you, Mitzi, because, you know, I was sort of kind of making this a special occasion. <laughs> See? What did I tell you? Well, come on, sugar. Let's get going. <laughs> so long, kids. Have a good time. Yeah, we will. We're going down to Sloppy Joe's and... Oh, why don't you look where you're going? I was going... Uh, 
look, honey, don't you think you ought to give up pictures? It's an awful grind. I work four days and two months, and you call it a grind. But I mean those stunts you have to do. What do they get you? Thirty-five bucks a day and a lot of black and blue marks. Hey, you know, honey, I don't know any fancy words, and, and I, I don't make big dough. <laughs> and I guess I don't look like no Venus. Adonis, but... you dumbbell. Will you quit horsing around and give me that ring? Ring? How'd you know I had a ring? I could tell by the sparkle in your lovely eyes. No kidding. Come on, give. <clears throat> Ain't it a pip? Mm, gee, Eddie, you shouldn't have spent so much money. Boy, oh boy, look at her shine. Say, whose ring is this, yours or mine? Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Surprise, honey? No, I've been trying to get it for the last five years. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you. You always say what you mean and mean what you say. <laughs> so sorry. This is all that. Why, you... Not making foolish move, please. Holding up hands and turning back, please. Not got all night? Turn around, Eddie. That ain't no bean shooter he's holding there. Here, none of that. Stick to your stick up. Excuse, please. No. Oh. So sorry, please. Well, that was a short engagement. Why that dirty crook? Am I in a spot now? You're in a spot. Yeah. I might as well tell you, honey. I owe 190 bucks on that ring, and it ain't insured. Oh. Down deep in my heart. I got a feeling that I love you Down deep in my heart I got a feeling that you care too It's foolish to part Because of some misunderstanding Right or wrong, why not string along like we used to do Life holds such beautiful things Even when it's stormy weather You know love has its flings So why can't we share love together Down deep in my heart I got a feeling that I love you Down deep in my heart I got a feeling that you love me too Hey, that's a long letter you're writing, buddy. You've been out at three hours. Life Who's it to? I'm writing it to myself. Even when yourself? <laughs> what does it say? You well, that's a ridiculous question. I don't know why, though. I don't get it through the bar, do I? <laughs> now I've heard them all. <laughs> deep in my heart I got a feeling that I love you Down deep in my heart I got a feeling that you love me By step. Sure. 
What's wrong, miss? Everything. Oh, it can't be that bad. Come on, let's see you smile. Listen, my boyfriend's there for Australia half an hour ago. What am I supposed to do with a song and dance? Look, miss. That means all of us. I'm sorry. here. How do you like this? Looks like somebody gave the place a good going over. It certainly does. Joel isn't home yet. Don't you think you better look around, honey, and see what they've taken? There's probably nothing missing. I think I know what this is all about. Oh, now, don't tell me you knew this was going to happen. No, oh, but I suspected it might. Same thing happened to poor Dad, only he was unlucky enough to be home when they came. Here's what they were after. Oh, what's this? The blueprints of the searchlight filter Dad was working on. I know that's what they wanted. Mm. Keep it for me, would you, Jimmy? It'll be much safer with you. Well, sure, but uh, I think you ought to report this to the police right away. I guess I should. Hello? Joan, where are you? What? Were you in an accident? My car! Joan and Eddie are at police headquarters. They were held up and my car was stolen. Uh-oh, they must have thought these plans were in the car. Looks like they did a pretty complete job, huh? You better bring a couple of cops home with you. We have another job for them here. And hurry. Well, looks like everything happens at once. I'm wondering about these plans, honey. You know George McCall, don't you? The head electrician at the studio? Yeah. Well, he was a pal of Dad's. What about him? Well, it strikes me that he might be the one to complete these plans. He knows his business and he's honest. It's a good idea, Jimmy. Do you want me to talk to him about it? I wish you would. All right, I'll see him first thing in the morning. Well, I guess we better start cleaning up this mess. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you touch anything until the police get here. Oh, I guess that's right. If your source of information is reliable, I'll pay you $200 for the tip. My source is perfect, but it's 400 or no deal. I can buy all the transport departure tips I want for 200 Not this one you can't. Well, you want it or not, make up your mind. All right, Beck. It's a deal. That's better. American Transports left San Pedro. Thank you. Gentlemen, we must face the fact that America at last is starting to combat activities such as ours all over the country. And our situation is becoming more difficult. We must work night and day. Yes? Mr. Beck is here. Send him in. How do you do, Dr. Werner? Heil Hitler. I think you know this, gentlemen. Unofficially. 
Mr. Beck, Mr. Okura, Mr. Dancy. Glad to know you. I'm putting Mr. Beck under payroll. I think it will be cheaper than trying to bargain with him. Now, Beck, what is it you wanted to suggest? Here's the biggest break we've had in years. Read this. This is good news. It means that we can now listen to official Army and Navy telephone conversations, providing we take the simple precaution of using an induction coil instead of tapping in on their lines. How does the induction coil work? Now, let us assume that we want to tap in on Bob Davis' office. I like your assumption, Beck. We conceal a mic in the office, which is connected with a transmitter, which is concealed in an office which we rent in the same building, or one nearby. But it would be too dangerous for us to be seen in the Davis building. Oh, but you don't understand, Doctor. We don't have to be there. No? No, we can relay the telephone conversations to any place that we choose as a listening post. You mean we could listen in right here? Of course, and make recordings of everything they say in the office or on the telephone. Very good. That's sounding too good to be true. It says right here that's the way the law has been interpreted. Well, that's dropping it right in our laps. Sure. We couldn't have done a better job if we'd written the law ourselves. But don't cough, these Americans are. <laughs> Jimmy, at the board meeting last night, I was told that you had asked to be placed in 1A. Yes, sir, that's right. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about it, although it may spoil something that I had in mind for you. What's that? How would you like to serve your country right here in Los Angeles? Well, I guess I wouldn't care if I got a chance to do my part. Well, you may not know it, but there are other places where men can serve. What do you mean? Do you know Bob Davis by any chance? No, I don't know him, but I've heard him on the air. I think he's doing a pretty good job, too. Well, how would you like to help him do a better job? How? Well, Bob is a pal of mine, and he has asked me to find some chap like yourself to help him get the goods on some of these subversive groups and wipe them out. Mm. Want to take a shot at it? Sure, if you say so. You're the boss. Well, okay. From now on, Bob is your boss. I want you to go over and have a talk with him. I'll keep you in 3A while you're working with Bob, but check with me in a few months, will you? All right, I'll go over right away. His office is over in the Taft building, isn't it? Yes, but you won't find him there. He has a room in an old, office, an old factory building downtown. There's the number. I see. All right, thanks very much, Mr. Stevens. You're welcome. Good luck, Jimmy. Thank you. Say, uh, where can I find Bob Davis? Right upstairs in six. Thanks. Hey, buddy, you got a cigarette on you? I don't think so. I, I'm sorry I'm out. Wait a minute. Don't give me that. What'd you say? You heard me. Oh! What's the idea of taking a punch at my pal? Uh, looking for trouble, eh? Say, what is this, anyway? I'll show you what this is. Bob, come and get him, will you? All right, young fella, you'll do. Huh? I just wanted to see if you could take it. I'm Bob Davis. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> nice work, boys. Here's your dough. Thanks. Well, it looks like you earned it. Are you telling me? No hard feelings, is there, buddy? Oh, I guess not. Gee, you're tougher than I thought you were. Here, have one on me. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> so long, Bob. If you need us again, you know where to find us. Okay, Spike. Keep punching, pal. Boy, I thought I was slipping. Come on in the office, Jimmy. You know Robert Nelson and Elliot Jennings? 
Yeah, I think I've seen their pictures in the paper. Why? Well, I believe they're just small cogs in a big wheel. What do you mean? We're sitting on a keg of dynamite. Out here in the Pacific Coast, we're right in the midst of a terrific amount of enemy propaganda, evidently being directed by someone with an extraordinary amount of intelligence. Who that someone is, we've got to find out. Hmm. You think Nelson Jennings are mixed up in this, huh? Exactly. From now on, I want to know every move they make. That's your job. Well, that's good enough for me. Where do we start? Here's Nelson's address. It uh, may save you some time. Oh, fine. Good luck. Thanks. I'll give you a daily report. While I defy anyone to question my Americanism, I say to you that this war has been badly bungled. Oh. Oh. We've made many mistakes, huge, costly mistakes. But the most colossal was giving the president too much power. Oh. And now we are as much a totalitarian government as those nations in Europe and Asia that we are supposed to despise. Oh. Today we're shouting the praises of Soviet Russia for their heroism and their military achievements. What a sad commentary on the democracies of our forefathers. Fui. I don't like Soviet Russia, and I wouldn't raise a finger to help her. Fui. You don't like what's being said, why don't you scram? Listen, I could say fui any time what I want. In this country, we got free speech, even for a gun of like him. Cut out that kind of talk. Ah, fui for you too. Friends, I have here a letter from one of our most prominent citizens commending our association for its patriotic work. Fui! I'd like to read it. Look, mister, you've gone far enough. My friend, if you have anything to say, Please do so in as few words as possible. Yes, I'll say it in a few words. Look, mister, I don't know so many big words like you, but this I know. You call yourself a hundred percent American, huh? Certainly I am. Are you? Naturally. I mean, naturalized. <laughs> I suppose your father and mother came from Russia. No, they didn't. They're still over there. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. Where do the Americans come from anyway? From all over the whole world, that's where. But you, you are trying to make everybody believe. Everybody should believe that your father and your grandfather and your great-great-grandfather, none of them came from the old country, huh? That's right, and three generations further back. They were still Americans. But are you an Indian? <laughs> <laughs> Just a moment, friends. I do not intend to have any idiot break up a meeting of mine. All right, Nelson. Then we'll break it up for you. We have a warrant charging you with sedition. And you too. Well, this will tickle Bob Davis to death. Well, here she goes. This will tell the whole story. Looks like you got it, Mac. Yeah. Notice how the light shines on those planes? Oh, that's perfect. I bet those boys up there wondering where that light's coming from. It's marvelous. You can hardly see the beam standing right here beside it. Uh, that's the whole idea. Gee, if those were enemy planes. Yeah, what a target for the anti-aircraft boys. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this light now. You've done a wonderful job, Mac. Oh, there was hardly anything to do. Your dad had it practically figured out. Bad he's not here to get the credit. Yes. Pop would have been so proud. He used to say to me, Mitzi, be darling, no man is too old to do his bit for his country, as long as there's one good idea left in his brain. He was right, honey. Mac, the Army sure ought to go for this. Wouldn't it be great? Since we found out how important that searchlight filter is to the government, I'm more convinced than ever that Mitzi's old man was murdered because of it. Well, there's a possibility of that. But the police haven't discovered one shred of evidence that points to that theory. Oh, I knew the old boy pretty well. He wasn't the kind to take his own life. Especially since he had the invention almost completed.
What have you got down there? Number nine, Davis' office. Anything important? Yes, I'll type it out for you as soon as they stop talking. Eddie's here with the truck. We were going to grab a sandwich, then he has to pick up a load in San Pedro. I hate to bother you, but is there any way you could pick up my costume at the cleaners and bring it down to me? Sure, I'd love to. Oh, swell. Bye. So long, honey. I have to pick up a dress for Mitzi. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll buy me a good dinner, I'll ride all the way to San Pedro and back with you. Okay. You can have the full 65 cent blue plate dinner. Spendthrift. Well, I'd better turn off the gas under the stew. We can eat that tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do our bit because we love Uncle Sam. It's taps for the Japs, buddy. We must fight. Yes, we'll fight man to man. That sneaky race is gonna diminish. Cause what they've started, we're prepared to finish. It's taps for the Japs, buddy. And my buddy will have victory. It's taps for the Japs, buddy. Those dirty devils have enjoyed their last spree. It's taps for the Japs, buddy. They can't fool with the land of the free. Our bugles sound all over the country. We've now awakened, and to put it bluntly, it's taps for the Japs, buddy, and a victory for you and me. You know, honey, I wish you didn't work away down here. I worry about you getting home late every night, especially since our holdup in the apartment being searched. Well, I feel perfectly safe. The FBI told me to keep right on working, that they'd have a man on the job to protect me. Where is he? Is he good looking? I don't know. I don't even know who he is. All I know is he's here somewhere. Gee, that's exciting. Ain't she even curious? Huh, if it was me, I'd be worn to a frazzle. I wonder which one is him. What does an FBI look like? Are they young, or old, or fat, or... Jeepers! What's the matter? Don't look now, but there's the guy that stole my ring in your car. Where? Sitting down over there with that ratty-looking guy. What'll we do? If you're sure, we'll call the police. No, no, don't do that. Why not? Well, Eddie's right outside, and he'd never forgive me if I didn't give him first crack at him. Hold everything. Martini. Uh, bourbon highball. Whatever you do, don't let him get away. What makes Doc think that guy Jimmy is wise to us? Anna have heard him talk to Davis. Oh, yeah? Looks like I'm gonna have to grab him by the arm, too. Hey, Eddie. Downstairs, quick. But really, I gotta pick up me load. You know who's down there? Yeah, the Navy. No, the mug that stuck us up and stole our ring. No! Yeah! That's different, me load can wait. Where is he? There he is. Yeah. Say, listen, me. Come here. Me to call the cops. Huh. Sorry, pal. That's right, Eddie. Come on. Wait a minute. Better call the cops, but take your time. Oh, no, you don't. You save yours for the Japs.
Good work, Eddie. That'll learn him not to hold up respectable people. Yeah, he had Here, the Eddie, here's your wallet. Thanks. That ain't mine. Boy, oh boy, look at that bunch of lettuce. Mm -hmm. Oh. Look at the pawn ticket. They hocked your ring for ten bucks. How do you like that? Mitzi, you better get your friends out of here. The cops are on their way. Thanks, pal. Give this to the cops. One of them guys dropped it. Sure. I'm keeping this pawn ticket. Yeah, it's for my engagement ring that those mugs stole. That's okay with me. Hey, wait a minute. That's the ten bucks I got in the ring. Now we're even. Come on, Toots. Let's get out of here. Okay. Oh, here's your bag. Thanks, Mitzi. What's this all about? The office is wired. Oh. I don't know where their headquarters are, but I've located the mechanism. Say, I've done a little locating myself. I think I know who this mastermind is we've been looking yeah. for. Yeah? I went down to the... Hold it. Hold it. that thing hooked up in there, Bob? Sure, why not? As long as I know it's there, it's okay. I'll feed them a lot of phony information. <laughs> Two could play at the same game, huh? If I only knew where their headquarters were, I could pull the same stunt on them. Yeah, well, that's what I came up here to tell you. Does the name U.S. Recording Laboratories mean anything to you? Anything new, Anna, while I was out? No, no, nothing important, just a telephone call. But Nick is here, Doctor. I'll see him in a few minutes. Tell him to wait. Yes, sir. Did I miss anything, honey? No, Nick's waiting to see him, apparently. Oh, fine. Jimmy, if you went to the store for a corned beef sandwich and they didn't have any corned beef, what would you get instead? Mmm, liverwurst. Hooray for me. That's just what I got you. Oh, Jimmy, when is Davis going to turn those records over to the FBI? We've got enough evidence on them now to send them all to prison. Well, I know, honey, but he wants to stick it out a couple more days. They made a few cracks he'd like to learn more about. Oh, boy. Look at this. Hello, Nick. Anna said you wanted to see me. Yeah. What's on your mind, Nick? I'm not satisfied with the dough you're paying me. Two hundred a week and no income tax? What more do you want? You're paying back 175, ain't you? Yes. And for 25 more, I have to commit murder. What kind of a deal is that? Calm down, Nick. Naturally, I want you to be satisfied, but... All right. Then what are you going to do about it? How about $50 a week more? All right. I suppose that'll do for now, but... See you tomorrow. Murder, huh? I wonder if that... Doctor. Yes, darling? You've got a luncheon appointment at 1 o'clock? Oh, yes. I believe you. What was Nick kicking about? Money. I'll take care of Mr. Nancy at papa time. Doctor. Yes, darling? When are we going back home? As soon as our work is done here, darling. Now, stop fighting. But when will that be? Perhaps sooner than we think. Have everyone here attend tomorrow morning for a final checkup. Yes, sir. Well, that's done. Anna, you mind, darling? This labor first is very good. Please pass their pickles and sauerkraut. Yes, doctor. Would you like some Frankfurt as much as sauerkraut? Jawohl, my Liebchen. <laughs> that's a pretty good imitation, Jimmy. You're not so bad yourself. You know, we could get jobs making Nazi pictures. They're making them every place now. No, thank you. I don't want work that badly. I guess you're right. But you know, we could make those records more incriminating if we wanted to. What do you mean? Don't know, but I think I feel an idea coming on. Hello. 
Hello, kids. Hello. Hello. Oh, sit Hello. down, you big egg. What are you doing off so early in the afternoon? Oh, ain't you heard about the 40-hour week? It's me day off. Sure. It's the first chance we've had to get my ring out of Hawk. Yeah, we're engaged again. Show it to him, Toots. Look at that. Hit it a pip? It's beautiful. Yeah, you know, if I keep working steady, it'll be paid for in a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, Ed. <clears throat> Say, honey, why don't we take a ride down at the beach? They can watch the place. Sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, what about the records? Well, Joe knows how to work it. Besides, I don't think anything else is going to happen until tomorrow morning at 10. Well, all right, I'll be with you as soon as I powder my nose. You make it snappy and I'll get this stuff out of here. Oh, you. never mind, I'll Jimmy. That. I'll take mm -hmm. it. Well, That's all right. Hey, Jim, what's this? Why, that's a uh, recording outfit, huh? What are you doing, making records? Yeah. What for? <laughs> well, that's kind of a military secret. Don't want to know nothing about it. No, 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 nothing. Don't, 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 don't tell me nothing. Yeah. How's that for speed? Too good, darling. Too good. Well, here we go. Goodbye, you lovebirds. Bye. Take it easy now. Take it Goodbye. easy. Bye. Say, uh, uh, why don't we all have dinner together tonight? Yeah. Yesterday was payday, so I'll treat to the... The 65-cent blue plate special. That's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> That'll be great. Thanks. Okay, see you. So long. Do you know, he's a nice guy. I always thought actors were a bunch of softies. No, I've worked with some that were tough enough to be truck drivers. In fact, they'd have made better truck drivers than they did actors. Do you think I'd make an actor, baby? Over my dead body. When I get married, I want to eat regular. So I stick to truck driving, eh? That's settled. Would you like a glass of beer? Sure. Okay, sit down and take a load off your feet. Here's your beer ready. Come on, let's sit down. Sure. Yeah, well, here's mud in your eye. You know something, baby? Sunday's me mother's birthday. Yeah? Yeah. I think it'd be nice if you called her up. What, all the way to Brooklyn? Sure, why not? Well, I was just thinking. I could make a record of me voice and she'd always have it. She could play it as many times as she liked. Why, Eddie, I think that's very sweet. Do you think we could do it? Sure. Come on, I'll show you how. Okay. Now, you talk into this. Hiya, I'm... Mom. This is Eddie. I was coming Oh, out... Eddie, wait a minute. I've got to turn the machine on. Mm. Hiya, Mom. Uh, what did I say? Many happy returns. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Mom. Wish you were here or I was there. Say that fruitcake you sent me last New Year's was sure swell, but it's all gone. I ate the last piece Easter Sunday. Say, this will sure give you a bang, Mom. Went and got myself engaged to the most beautiful girl in the world. She's a movie actress. So she falls off of horses and rolls down cliffs, and she's a high diver. Her name is Joan Collins, a good old Irish name. Wait a minute, I'll get Joan to say hello to you. Um, hello, Mrs. McGurk. Eddie told me all about you. Gee, I'm crazy about Eddie. I wish you could come out for the wedding. Well, goodbye now. Wait a minute, I want to sing Mom her favorite song. Make it <clears> snappy, <throat> we're running out of wax. Oh, believe me, if all those enduring young charms which I gave... I have some very important information which has some bearing on our work. Sooner or later, gentlemen, the Japanese will bomb Los Angeles. At that time, we must be ready to do our part towards making this bombing a demoralizing catastrophe. My part all done can blow up every reservoir in three hours. But first one understanding about bonus you promised. How much, please? Put 2,000 in it for each of you. Well, that's not enough. 2,000 is all I could get. You have to take it or leave it. Well, I'm not oh, going to... stop squawking, Nick. Yes, very easy money. All right, all right. A few guys are going to gang up on me. Fine. Now, Beck, have you any problems? No. My men are ready to cut every line of communication ten minutes after you give the order. Fine. That's what I call efficiency. Pretty good for an American. German American, if you please, Doctor. That's what accounts for it. Hello? Oh. Hmm. 
to bed. Thanks for calling. Nelson and Jennings have been convicted of sedition. How long do you think they'll get? By the year. In Germany, they would be shot without a trial. There's no such thing as failure in a new order. <laughs> nice people. I wonder what they think our boys will be doing when all this is happening. Listen, honey, I've got to get down and see Bob Davis. You watch this thing, will you? All I'll right. phone you later. This Warner thing is red hot. I think we ought to turn it over to the FBI right away. What goes on? According to the information we got, the Japs are going to bomb Los Angeles. Warner and his gang are mixed up in it. Have you got it on the wax okay? Yeah, I got all the details. Well, beat it over to your apartment and pack those records. I'll be right over. Okay. That's what comes from putting a man like Hausmann in charge of the East Coast. He should be back in Potsdam, running his delicatessen store. Nothing like that could have happened if Werner was in charge. And $150,000 gone, too. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't have happened either if Werner was in charge. Just what do you mean? Well, uh, they wouldn't have had that much on them if they were working for you. <laughs> Very funny. Money. Money, Nick. That's all you think of? What good is money if you are caught? You just do your job and the money will be there. You just leave that to me. Now get out of here. Both of you. All of you. Scram! Hey, wait a minute. Let's see what this is. Looks like we're being tapped. Well, let's find out. All we have to do is to follow this wire and it'll lead us right to the phone. I suppose that's connected with the FBI, huh? I'll find out. I have a friend with a telephone company. Better get in touch with him pretty quick. You bet. Yeah. Well, it's in the bag, honey. What a relief. Boy, wait till the FBI plays those records back for Warner. <laughs> Will his face be red? Yeah, I'd like to punch it red, white, and blue. Well, that must be Bob already. Get back in there. Oh. Frisk this guy, Nick. Nothing on him. Very clever, making nice records. No? Any more of them around here? Yeah, what am I supposed to say? Your prayers, if you know any. Not that they'll do you any good. Open it. So it's Bob Davis that's the mastermind behind this, huh? Put those records in something, let's get going. Come on, ladies first. Sooner or later, gentlemen, the Japanese will bomb Los Angeles. At that time, we have to be ready to do our part toward making this bombing a demoralizing catastrophe. My part, all done, can blow up every reservoir in three hours. But first, want understanding about the bonus you promised. How much, please? There will be 2,000 in it for each of you. Well, that's not enough. 2,000, that's all I could get. You have to take it or leave it. Well, I'm not oh, gonna... stop squawking, Nick. Yes, very easy money. All right, all right, a few guys are gonna gang up on me. Now, Beck, have you any problems? No. 
My men are ready to cut every line of communication ten minutes after you give the order. Fine. That's what I call efficiency. Pretty good for an American. German-American, if you please, Doctor. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's what accounts for it. So on this one. Very nice recording. And I can vouch for the fact that it is authentic, too. Davis, you have been playing with dynamite, and it blew up right in your face. Of course, I feel rather sorry for your stooges, but... What about your own stooges, Doctor? They don't seem to know what you and your girlfriend had in store for them, do they? Shut, what do you mean? If you want to hear something, why don't you let me play the next record? Stay there. I'll handle this. Well, Stooges, what about it? Go ahead, pick it out. Okay, play that one. How was the luncheon, Doctor? Fine, darling. I'm getting 50,000 from headquarters next week. In cash? Of course. I wouldn't take it any other way. Turn it off. I never said anything like that. Keep quiet. We're listening to the record. I'm beginning to think that guy knows what he's talking about. That's a lot of money, sweetheart. But it won't last long after you pay off the men. Don't be absurd, darling. I don't intend to give them any. I'll promise them a bonus so they will do their jobs properly. And uh, then it's South America for you and me. That's wonderful, sweetheart. But running out on the men, that is dangerous. No. A telephone call to the FBI. Just before we leave, we'll take care of them. I tell you, the whole thing, it's a fake. Fake, huh? You just said they were authentic. Sit down. Sit down! You dirty double-crossing rat. I'll see that you don't blow up Los Angeles or any other place. Nick! Stop talking, you I'll fool. I'll talk, I'll talk and you'll listen. Sure, I'm a fool. I was a fool to do your dirty work. I was a fool when I knocked off old man Mayo for a hundred bucks and Pop Wilson for fifty. I'm making the getaway, Werner, not you. And here's one killing that won't cost you a dime. Drop that gun. We've got all the evidence we need now, Werner, including murder. Jerry! Well, I suppose you didn't know he was an FBI man. Honestly, I didn't. Nice work, Jerry. Oh, don't thank us, Bob. They deserve all the credit. And Jimmy, your imitation of Werner was great. Well, Mitzi wasn't so bad as Anna, was she? <laughs> I'll say she wasn't. You kids ought to be doing dialect parts. It's a cinch we'd get more work. Come on, Tom, let's get these guys out of here. No, that's a great idea. If I had a love scene with you, I'd say, uh, uh, Mitzi, my little darling, I love you. With all my heart, I love you. <laughs> Why don't you try it without the dialect? 